Okay, in this short video, we're going to show you how to edit your home page. Um, depending on what level of permission you have will depend on what you can do and see. Um, so ideally, you'll be in the SharePoint site owners group. Uh, depending on how your permissions have been set up, if you're a site member that has edit permissions, you may also be able to do these actions as well. So step one, we need to go to the edit button in the top right corner there. Click here and it puts the page into edit mode. From here, we start with the banner. So this is the default image that it comes with. Here, if you need to reset it back to this image, you can click on this one here. Next one up, removes any images that are here. But if we want to change the image, we've got this top one here, change image. So I'm going to select there. Then gives us the ability to select from recent images we've been using. We can do a web search, we can locate files in our site, or we can also upload an image or from a link to another location to get that image. So I tend to store my images in my site assets, so I'm going to navigate there. Again, I've got a folder here called Site Images. And then we can select the banner we want to use. Then press Open. Then pops the image into the banner then you've got this ability to change the focal point so you can drag it up and down depending on how big the file uh, the image is once you're happy with it click there if you need to change that focal point at any point you get this additional icon here to select set focal point next we have the title this is replicated inside of your internet browser tab um, so any message you type in here or address will be popped into that tab in your internet browser. So I'm going to name my site here. So it's going to be in the browser tab as well as on this page. So again, whatever you type there will appear eventually in the tab as well. So that's your banner. Now let's start working on adding in web parts to your page. So if you hover over the center, you get this little plus symbol and that allows you to select from the available web parts. There's a whole list of them. I'm only gonna focus on a few of them because this is a short video today. First one I'm gonna do is the text web part. In here, you can type some information about your site and what you want it to include. So once you've filled in some information, I tend to use this text box to introduce my site and provide information to those that are visiting or accessing the data here. Next, we'll add in a quick links web part. So if I can, again, click the plus symbol, scroll down to find the one I'm looking for. Other useful ones might be the hero web part. Select that quick links web part here. So I'll bring that to the center. I like that and click. You notice it says quick links grayed out there. While it's grayed out, that means that the title will not, will not appear on your SharePoint page. If you do want a title, you can type it in here, like so. And then that will be the title that appears on your SharePoint page. To add a link, you select add. Usually I use these links to link somewhere within my SharePoint site, so I'm going to my site here. But you also have the option to upload or from a link. So if you have a document or a page you want to link to, you can go to the link there, or you can select it from the ones you've recently accessed here. So I'm going to add in my Region 1 documents, select that one, press open, and it opens up this information pane on the right hand side. You can then give it a title. If you want to change the image away from this standard globe image, you can click change. And again, you've got the choice to choose the image from the same options. So again, I'll go to sites, site assets, and the images I've uploaded recently. And open. 
there you go you can see you've now created that tile or a link to that location that document library you can then repeat the steps if you have more document libraries or other areas you want to send it to so now I've added a few different uh, regional document libraries here in my links um, you'll notice that some of them are out of place so if you want to move your file uh, locations around you can select your little cursor click on the left mouse button hold it and then drag it to where you want it to locate to like so and then you can repeat the steps for the others this is how you reorganize your tiles or your quick links So you can also change the view. Um, at the moment, we've got five tiles display across two lines. This is what we call a compact view. If we click here on this pencil, that allows you to edit the web part. And then there you can see the layout is currently set to compact. The other option is film strip. So if I select that one, minimize or close that, then you can see the tiles are now a little bit larger the fifth one is missing. You can see that it goes onto a second page and if you hover over it you get the option to click next to scroll across. So it depends on how you want to set your tiles up in your quick links. Um, I like this scroll along bar um, but where I get more than four I tend to use the compact view. For this training course I'm going to leave it as this view. I'm going to scroll down and we'll create another web part after this. Click the plus symbol now we're going to add in the people web part. So if I scroll down to people, here we go, select it, and it creates a new web part on your page. This one I'm going to call meet the team. And here you can just start typing the users' names, and it looks them up in your directory. As you can see, you just need to do it as many times as you need to to add your team members. And if I hover over them, you can get the details once the page is published of that person. So their email address, their phone number, uh, their site location. So there you go. That's a quick example of what you can do to your SharePoint page to edit it and make it work for you and your team. Once you're happy with the changes you've made, you can click Save as a Draft. You can then continue returning back to the page to update it. And then when you're fully happy and you're ready for it to be put, come public, you can hit that publish button and then that becomes a published version visible to all of your users. I hope this video has been useful and we'll be back in again soon with another video to help you out.